Hey guys, just wanted to do a quick walkthrough of something I've been working on. So lately I've been messing around with OpenAI's APIs and exploring ways to use artificial intelligence to develop practical and scalable solutions and also just to enhance my own projects. So what I'm going to show you here is a small natural language to SQL processor that I built in Python. And the idea is pretty straightforward. Put in a regular text prompt have the AI convert that prompt into SQL, and then use that SQL prompt to get data back from a database. Using the API, this took about an hour to put together. So this video is going to be a brief walkthrough of how that works. OK, so for this to work, we are going to have to install three different packages through pip. OK, and if you don't know, pip is basically Python's version of NPM and Yarn. OK, so first thing we're going to install is OpenAI. Obviously, that, that one's the main event. The next thing we're going to install is Pandas, okay? And Pandas is very common in data science and AI, and it's basically just a module that can help you with data manipulation and analysis. And then, of course, we're going to import SQL Alchemy, which is how Python interacts with SQL databases, okay? So first thing you're going to do is you're going to set up your API key, okay? And all I'm really doing here is I'm adding it to my environmental variables. I'm going to name it OpenAI API key. And then I'm going to configure my OpenAI to use that API key. That's all these two lines are, OK? All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a data frame. That's what DF stands for. We're going to create a data frame using pandas. And all we're going to do is we're going to take our JSON file, which is basically going to be the data that we're working with, and we're going to convert it to a data frame. So this data that we're working with comes from a project that I've worked on. Okay, it's basically a little instrument encyclopedia, and it's going to have the columns name, instrument family, made from, how to play, is rhythm, and video URI. So you put this into YouTube, and it'll take you to a video of someone playing that instrument. All right, pretty straightforward there. Okay, so now that we have our data frame, what we're going to do next is create, we're going to create a temporary database in memory. All right. And all we're going to do, we're going to create tempdb. We're going to call create engine, which is from SQL Alchemy. And we're going to use SQLite as our database, just because it's pretty easy to spin up. And we're going to put it in memory. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push our data frame that we got from pandas to our DB. We're going to call df.toSQL. And we're going to take all this data that I just showed you earlier. We're going to put it in a table called instruments. And we're going to put that table in our temporary database. OK. And so this line right here is not really essential to the to the app, but it's just here to prove that it works. So let me just comment these out. And then we can focus on this right here. OK, so I'm going to do Python 3 app.py. And this is what we should get back. This is all the data from our instruments JSON file, OK, but in SQL form. And it's just printing it as an array. That's all that's really happening here. And this is basically from this prompt here. Select all from instruments. We're just selecting and showing everything, OK? So that's it, just to prove that it works. All right, so now let's go on to the main event here. So. We are going to have a user input. Now, obviously, in a real scenario, this would be data that comes from a form. But you know, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to put we're just going to hard code this here. Show all rhythmic instruments. All right. And now we're going to create our our prompt or our query to send off to OpenAI. All right. So the way we're going to do that, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to make prompts. So we're going to run a function called combine prompts that takes our data frame and our user, our query prompt, or really in this case, the user input. OK, so let's hop over here. So what this basically does is that it just creates the prompt that we're going to send off to OpenAI. OK, and so that prompt is going to be broken down into two parts, definition and query init string. So let's talk definition. So we're going to run a function called create table definition where we pass in our data frame. And that's going to be go up here. And so 
this is basically like the beginning of a prompt. Like if we were to go to chat GPT and we wanted to, we wanted it to make a SQL query, we would write something like this. So we're basically saying, hey, we have a SQL light SQL da database with the following properties. And all we're doing here is that we're taking all the columns that exist in our data, in our data frame, and we're just going to put them here. Okay. And then we're going to return that. And then we're going to create our query init string. And basically all we're doing is we're adding this to our prompt. Okay. A query to answer. We're going to put in the prompt. We're going to make a new line and we're going to start our SQL query with select because this is how you always start SQL queries. Okay. And we're going to return the concatenation of definition and query string. So the result is going to look something like this. Okay, SQLite SQL table with the properties, instruments name, blah, 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 and then query to answer, you know, in this case, I think it was, yeah, show all rhythmic instruments. So it's really going to look like this. Okay, and then OpenAI is going to basically going to complete this prompt based on what we have here. So you have to think of all these APIs from OpenAI as completion engines. Basically what that means is that it's going to create a prompt based on what's most likely to happen afterwards. And this is what this is how most language models are built. So let's say you wanted to create your own language model, all right? Let's say we wanted to create an autocomplete. There's only two sentences so far. I want a puppy and I want a cat, okay? Let's say you're training an AI model with these two. So this means if you do an autocomplete, let's say you're in a type one of these, let's say I, and then it'll predict that you want the word want, and then it'll predict you want the word a, and then there's a 50-50 chance it'll be either puppy or cat, okay? Let's just say cat. I like cats. <laughs> All right, and so then if you wanted to make it more likely that cat will show up, you would throw in another string into your, into your model, and it'll make it more likely that cat comes up, All right? So that's just basically how these prompts work, okay? So we're using those ideas to create a SQL query, all right? So we have our prompts. We're back over here. And I'm just going to quickly print the query prompt just to show you that it works. And see, look at that. See, look, it's exactly what I have right here. All right. All right, now on to the main event. Okay, this is how you create an API call to OpenAI, all right? We're gonna use the completion API and we're gonna pass in these params. This is where your prompt goes, under prompt. Well, duh. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to run our API call and then we're gonna get our response. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna handle the response. Actually, what, before we move on, I'm just gonna run this real quick and I'm gonna actually cancel this just so you can see what we got here. Okay, so now this is what we get back from our API. We get back this object that has choices and then all this other metadata that you may or may not need, okay? We're gonna want choices. Choices is an array, so we're gonna want the zeroth index and then we're gonna want this. This is exactly what we want right here this query so the way that's going to work is we're going to run the handle response function and where is it right here so basically all we're doing is we're getting choices zeroth index text and we're going to say just in case it, it starts with a space which this does we're just going to concatenate them exactly like this and then return the query let's actually run the query and see what that actually looks like. Okay, so as you can see here, we have just our rhythmic instruments. We have the sampler, our djembe, our drum set, tambourine, triangle. So yeah, that's basically API calls in a nutshell. All right, hopefully you found that very interesting and I, I hope to do more stuff with AI in the future. This is super cool. And uh, I'll see you back here soon.